Hey nesters, welcome back to Nesting Haven. Today I am taking you thrifting along with me. This is actually a part two to this series. So if you missed part one, be sure to go ahead and check that out after this is over. But I will share some more thrifting as I went to that store this day. And then we'll go ahead and do the thrift haul at the end of this video. So I've been really into the baskets after watching Little House on the Prairie. Me and my husband binge watched it over the last few months. Really loved the show. And they used baskets back in the day, obviously. And I've just been really looking for some cool baskets to get in our state where they're not doing plastic bags anymore. And I feel like the baskets are a little bit more solid than all of the cloth bags and stuff. So... I thought it might be kind of cute to find a few, at least to take to the farmer's market or something like that. We also did get chickens this past year, and they had just started laying eggs in December. So I already have a smaller basket that I've been taking out, but, you know, as they start laying more, I might go ahead and need a bigger basket. And we like to garden and things like that, so these would be really good for harvesting as well, and just for different odds and ends in the house, good for organizing, so... Just been really into the baskets lately. Next, I found this really cool vintage Pyrex casserole holder. So you go ahead and set your glass casserole dish inside of it to kind of keep it off the hot table and just to kind of dress it up some. Once they switched to more of the clear glass, they didn't have, you know, all the fun colors. It was just a fun way to kind of dress up an otherwise kind of boring looking dish. Or sometimes the casseroles maybe just don't look too cute as far as what the food is on the outside. And even though it tastes good, it might not look as good. So you might want to cover that up sometimes. I usually will give the mugs a quick look. I don't dig too deep at them, but if anything catches my eye, I will grab it. This was a Prince Island souvenir piece. I don't really resell to Canada too much. I'm pretty much just sell to the US. So I decided not to get that. I wasn't sure if you know anyone in the US would really want a Canadian souvenir piece. Maybe they would, but I figured it would be a harder sell. So even though it was cute, I decided to pass on that. They had this darling little pitcher. And it was on the smaller size here. Maybe it was just a large creamer. <laughs> but you, as you can see, the blue stripes were very faded. So it was unfortunate, but I put that back. And then I found the adorable Bluebird Goose Oval pictures here from the 80s. So fun. So you got to save the Bluebird Goose, right? Those weren't too badly priced. Those were put out by Home Co. And then over here on the glass case, they had some vintage chalkware owls. They're asking $3.99 a piece for them. It did appear that they both had their hangers. There was some paint issues, but nothing too serious. But I just feel like owls, they had their heyday already. Like they kind of came back, and I feel like they're not as popular right now. Maybe they'll come back around again, but I don't know. Do you guys still enjoy collecting owl things? Or are you guys kind of over it? Let me know in the comments. I always love these very bold colors on the tins and I'm always trying to think of different things I can use the tins for because I just always enjoy, you know, looking at them. They're a great like advertisement piece, but they just have such fun graphics on them. There's always so many cute bells out there, but I literally have never seen a person collect bells or really want to have bells in their house. So I generally pass them by, but for some reason I always tend to pick them up <laughs> and at least check them out. They had this adorable little sign here, it's a ceramic sign, and the graphing on it just reminded me of Little House on the Prairie. Like I said, we had been binge watching it, and I just could not pass this up. I just thought it was so darling. They did have this Joseph Original Angel in the box. It said First Communion on it, which I thought was pretty specific, so I didn't think I'd have the easiest time reselling this particular one had it been like one of the month ones or a more like themed for like a holiday, I probably would have snagged it. I was getting ready to cash out and I spied these hand crocheted trivets. So you'd use these as more of a hot pad, not so much as a pot holder because they do have like the little holes in them, but they are really cute. You don't see the rogue Mrs. Claus too much. Usually Santa gets all the attention, but they did have this hand painted ceramic one up there. Kind of cute. I'm sure she had a partner, Santa partner somewhere that probably broke through the years, but 
kind of adorable. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the haul portion of the video. I picked up things both to keep myself and a few things to resell. I will start with the things I got to resell, I guess, first. So I, like I said, I love tins, especially with the bold graphics. And I found this vintage 1979 Barnum's Animal Cracker tin, or I guess they call it National Biscuit Company. The crackers are biscuits, the crackers. <laughs> but the graphics are really nice on this. Has a little bit of patina, but not too bad. So this did come out in 1979, but it's actually a replica of the 1914 design that they had done on their tin. So has some cool history to it there. Not in too bad shape, but it's really fun. I think this would be cool to store some like cookie cutters in, in your kitchen. And that way it's something you don't use all the time, but when you're ready to go use it, you know where to grab them. So really cute there. Next, I snagged this really cool wooden pedestal bowl. This, you could probably fit some fruit if you don't buy a lot of fruit in it. I think that's what a lot of people will use this style bowl for. They're asking $2.99 for this. It has a nice dark brown color to it, and um, it does have this padding on the bottom so it won't slide around too much. And yeah, so I think it has a lot of good uses, and it's a nice kind of neutral earth tone color that would go with a lot of different things, so. I just kind of really like that. So as you guys saw, as I was moving up to the register to cash out, these vibrant colors popped out at me and I had to check them out. And they kind of look like watermelon, right? But they actually have this like handmade strawberry shortcake on it. You can see the little strawberries in her bonnet. So fun. Or if you didn't want that side, you could always flip it around for this. But so cute and like I was saying my mother actually has made a lot of things like this and you don't want to use these for pot holders because they do have the little holes in them so it's really more to just to put on your table and set a hot dish on so it doesn't burn your surfaces but really fun this one does have a little bit tighter of a knit so potentially this area might be but I wouldn't risk it I would probably just use it for a little trivet or just for cute decor it's really fun So I couldn't resist picking this up because of my little house on the prairie obsession as of late. So I had to snag it. It is like this porcelain piece and is made in Japan. It has a marking right there of Japan. It also is embedded here as well, where it says made in Japan. It was pretty dirty at the thrift store, so I did not see the damage that is on it. So there is a little bit of a chip at the back of it right here. And then a little bit in the painted like graphic, there are some spots where like little pieces of the tree has popped off and like maybe like a little flower, but it's not really too bad. I still think it has a lot of cute factor to it. And honestly, when it's sitting on a shelf, you're not gonna be pinpointing all those little flaws in it. I think, you know, the overall piece is still there. So I think it's still pretty solid and I'm glad I picked it up. I think it's really fun. So you guys know I love my state souvenir pieces, so I did pick up a few to resell. The first one is this darling little Texas trivet, Texas wildflowers. It has the blue bonnet, Indian paintbrush, and yellow primrose are the three flowers. And then it does have this backing on it so it won't slide on your surface and the little hanger at the back. So if you just want it for decor, which is what I tend to use most of my trivets for, because I mean, really how many trivets do I need? But <laughs> I like them as decor, but they're also very useful. And you could probably use this as a coaster as well. So, you know, I think it'd be nice to put like a teapot on if you want to have your hot water and then just like sit down at the table. That'd probably be a good use for it as well. But pick that one up. The other state silver nair piece I grabbed was this Oregon coast souvenir plate it does have the rope already on the back of it so you don't have to worry about being able to hang it on the wall with you know coming up with some way to do that it is made in korea and yeah i'm not super familiar with oregon except for people yell at me for calling it oregon instead of oregon is it oregon or yeah oregon i think is how you're actually supposed to say it but i don't know I don't know if it's just because I'm from Maine and it's the way we say it, but I would say Oregon. Let me know how you guys pronounce Oregon, but I guess it's kind of controversial. <laughs> I 
And the last state plate I picked up was this beautiful Blue Transfer Wear Colorado one. It features like six different attractions there. I've actually been to Colorado a few times, really enjoy it, but I don't recognize the things on this. I was mostly in the golden, like evergreen area. This has Pikes Peak, Durango, Silverton, Narrow train station, uh, the Will Rogers Shrine, Manitou, Cliff Dwellings, the USAFA Chapel, and Black Canyon of the Gunnison, I guess. So, not familiar with any of those, but I'm sure if you're a Colorado native, you probably know what that is, or if you vacation there, but still a really gorgeous plate. This blue transfer wear is pretty popular and it's a nice spin on it if you don't like so much the Victorian scenes that you usually see on it, and but you really like the looks of the blue transfer wear. This could be up your alley to collect maybe this type of estate plate. Next, I found this really neat Betsy Ross decorative plate. Of course, Betsy Ross is the flag maker here and it features her doing so with the colonial people. And this was actually put out by Avon. So it is, it was made exclusively for Avon by Enoch Wedgwood and it was put out in 1973. So this would obviously look really great with your 4th of July displays. And yeah, I just thought it was a really fun piece. Nice little historical item. I did end up snagging these three wooden bowls. They are hand painted with different tree leaves on it. So we have this one here, which might be, I guess it's kind of like a maple, I would guess. And these are all signed on the bottom BL, and then it says Blairsville, Georgia. So I guess that's where they were made. I'm not sure the artist. And then this one would be oak leaves, I believe. They have this really cool primitive vibe to them. It's really cute. And then this is kind of like your basic like alder leaf. I don't really know the type of tree that's from, but once again, you can see they're all signed on the bottom there. So really cool. I'll likely sell these as a set of three, but I just thought they were really fun. I did grab a few pieces of jewelry. I picked up one thing to resell just because I know people like Halloween stuff and I thought this was kind of neat. It is a vintage 90s piece. It's from 1996 and it's just this nice little enameled jack-o'-lantern there. It came on this chain, but I mean, you could always change the chain out if you didn't enjoy that, but I'll likely just throw that up on eBay auction for not start out for very much and see if anyone's interested. It's kind of an odd time of year, but we'll see what happens. But I thought it'd be fun. I know a lot of people enjoy Halloween. All right, well, switch over to the items I picked up for myself. I guess I'll go ahead and continue with the jewelry. I picked up this beautiful blue. It's like a nice royal blue bracelet. It has a little bit of stretch to it and I prefer this type. I don't wanna have to deal with cl clasping anything together. So I just think these are nice and easy. You do want to be careful of the condition of the elastic because obviously they're more likely to break than the class ones but you know i just think they're more comfortable so i enjoyed that and i also snagged one it's another elastic one this is it looks wooden which i enjoy the wooden jewelry but it's kind of i don't know how to describe it, it almost feels like deer antlers really it's like a really smooth must be some type of like an enamel or something, but it's a really cool look to it. And like I said, it looks wooden, which is what I enjoyed. So I snagged those two bracelets there. And then I grabbed this necklace that looked pretty 1970s kind of earth tone vibe that I like. So I thought that would be a nice little costume jewelry piece. They had $3.99 on this and I believe the bracelets were 99 cents a piece. So not a bad deal there. And I did grab this pair of earrings <laughs> in the very 1980s teal. I'm not really sure if I will wear them or resell them, but I just thought they were kind of fun. So I snagged those. I think those are 99 cents as well. I only ended up grabbing this one basket. It was March $3.99. I picked this one because it has a really solid weave to it. I mean, this thing's going to hold a lot of weight. So Ultimately, I wanted something that would do that and don't have to worry about putting too much, you know, heavy stuff in if I'm harvesting stuff in the garden. 
like tomatoes or if I want to get the heavier things like zucchini or something like that or a couple squashes or something, I won't have to worry about that. So no matter what I get in the garden for one night's picking, it'll be all right in this. So I was pretty happy with that find. And of course I grabbed the two oval blue good geese pictures. These were put out in 1985 by Homeco. They are made in the USA. It's a glass and it has that, you know, typical like Homeco plasticky frame you would find back then. It has a vintage kind of back to you. So you know it's a little bit older, but these are really fun. I don't have any blue geese pictures on my wall and I like the size to these. So I'm going to find a place to incorporate them into my house. I do have a lot of like the knickknacks or jars and stuff, but yeah, I thought this was really cool. Only 99 cents a piece for those. And for $1.99, I also picked up this Pyrex casserole holder. I probably am actually gonna end up using this as a cookbook holder. So you can use things like this and then put the cookbooks inside to kind of act as a bookend. And I think that's what I'm going to do because I do my kitchen in fruit and vegetables, kind of like a harvest theme. Since I kind of have a farm going here, I just think it's fun. And I will probably put some of my cookbooks in my kitchen that I'm using in this. So. Hopefully that works out. The larger ones won't fit as much, but as some this size, I think will work just fine. This I paid $4.99 for, and it is completely wooden. Sometimes you find these and they're plastic, but this is wood. And that's why the condition is probably a little bit rough. Can probably maybe even oil it. I was thinking of painting it, but I might try oiling it first and just seeing if I can kind of shine up this wood because I kind of prefer the wood look to it, honestly. But yeah, I'm not going to be mad at it if I end up having to paint it or just leave it as really. I'm not too concerned with the vintage wear. I kind of like it showing its age, but I got this because I had seen some different uses you can use for this and I wanted to try it with my necklaces. I don't have a real good way of hanging my necklaces and I thought when I saw that, that that would work pretty well. So we'll try it out. A lot of my bigger costume jewelry necklaces won't work but the more like fine jewelry type will. And if I don't use it for that, I'll find some other use for it. Just something that's neat. Originally like the vintage spoon holders, I believe is what you can use it for. Some people that like to collect vintage hankies can go ahead and kind of stuff those in there and kind of display them nicely. So I might do something besides the necklaces with it. Not sure yet, but I wanted to grab it. I thought it was a pretty interesting piece. I did grab several books here, so I'll just quickly go through them. I won't go into too much detail, but this one here, I like to collect the homesteading, any kind of homesteading books. And this is Carding, Spinning, and Dyeing. This is dealing with wool and flax. So they used to actually make yarn out of flax back in the day, which I'm not super familiar with. So I thought that'd be a fun read and kind of teaches you how to go ahead and do that with wool and flax and how to dye it different ways to make yarn. So I thought that would be interesting. Didn't really have any books on that. I did pick up this cookbook here with party dips. And then the set of four, like I had said in my thrift of me, there was a fifth one in this collection, but they did not have that one there. But that one was just a meat recipe book, which I would rather just have these four anyways. So that's fine by me. I could not pass them up. They had such a fun binding on it. So vintage and cool. I believe these were, I believe these were 1967, if I'm correct, 68. Okay, so this is from 1968 and just absolutely gorgeous. So a great find there. Definitely add those to my kitchen. Then I got some little golden books. We got the sailor dog here. This one's a little bit in rough condition, but their books are priced really nicely. I think, I wanna say the children's books are only like 49 cents there. This one's from 1953, so I guess it's earned its wear rate. And we got this Garfield and the Space Cat one. I assume this is probably from the 80s. That's when Garfield was big, right? 1988. <laughs> I grabbed the 12 Days of Christmas here. This one looks a little bit older, it has Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, and I might actually already have this one. I couldn't remember, and I need to catalog my 
books because oftentimes I'm going through the books and I'm like, oh, I don't know if I already have this one, especially with the little golden books. Those are hard to remember. This is from 1958, so that is a bit older there. Then I grab Dora's Search for the Seasons. My kids enjoy Dora, uh, Hansel and Gretel. This one is probably the 80s, 1990, exactly. <laughs> uh, Little Turtles, Big Adventure. Another golden book, Riddles, Riddles from A to Z. This is really, I love the graphics to these, so that one's fun. This one looks older too. 1972, The Shy Little Kitten. I grabbed George and Martha round and round. Look like a fun book. I couldn't resist this one. It was just, <laughs> just a, such a cute little cover here. Mailman of Bay, Bayberry Lane. More fun graphics, got a little goose. <laughs> uh, we got The Luckiest Christmas Tree Ever. So put on 1993. Seems a little older than that. Mickey's Christmas Carol. Mother Rabbit's Son Tom. Thought that might be interesting for an Easter read. And then a Muppet Babies show in Yell <laughs> book. I always enjoyed Muppet Babies as a kid, so. And my kids like the new show as well, so. Figured that would be a good thing to pick up. So like I said, I think the children's books are like 49 cents there. And I wanna say, the non chiller books are probably maybe $1.99, $2.99 a piece, so not too bad. So I'm one of those people that still own a cassette player, and the only issue was I don't really have any cassettes anymore. I never really owned many cassettes back in the day. I would just get the blank tapes. They had a bunch of cassette tapes there, and I had asked the price, and they were only $0.29 cents a piece. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and pick some up and give them a shot. This one here... I thought it was really fun. I'm a big Beatles fan. And this one's Elton John, John Lennon. So it says Elton John Lennon. <laughs> so it's a, a live show they did, I guess. And I've already listened to it. It's really good. So that was a good pick up there. Uh, they mostly had country music, which I like. <laughs> Older country music and some of the old like 50s kind of doo y stuff. So got that one there, some oldies. Some Bob Seger, Patsy Klein, The Shaking 50s. So this is the stuff I listened to as a kid. <laughs> I wasn't really into the pop. A lot of people liked, you know, the pop radio stuff. And I listened to old country and like 50s doo-wop stuff. So this was a fun find. This is a Salute to Country Classics. This has Patsy Klein on it too. And has Harper Valley PTA. Boxcar Willie, Conway Twitty. <laughs> and then we got Rowdy Country, some more just kind of outlaw country stuff. And then Keith Whitley's Greatest Hits. I always enjoyed Keith Whitley as a kid. My dad played in a country band and he played a couple of Keith Whitley's songs. So I always enjoyed him as well. I was also happy to find one afghan to pick up in my 1970s colors that I love. It will go perfect in my living room space. It has the brown and orange and tan or beige as my son would call it. He's really into, he's six and he's learned what the color beige is and everything is beige. <laughs> I'm not even sure I know what the color beige is. Technically, I feel like it's a lot of different shades, but he's really into the beige color. <laughs> and so this is a pretty big afghan. Has some cool little tassels to it. So I think this will work really great on the back of my couch. And that'll look pretty fantastic. I have some green walls in my living room and I think this would be a nice way to balance that out. So I believe it was $5.99 and in fairly good condition. This wasn't full of pet hair. Like oftentimes I find these and they're just like saturated in cat hair. So that's, <laughs> that's usually a big turn off for me. So I was happy and thankful for that. But that is going to do it for my thrift haul today, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to let me know down in the comments what item I picked up today that was your favorite. If I said I was reselling it, you can check my eBay store out if you are interested in any, anything. I'll probably have some of it in a live sale in a couple weeks here as well. 
And yeah, we'll catch you in the next one, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye. Mm -hmm.